everybody, and welcome to Power Pro Wrestling. I'm Jim Ross. Thank you very much for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. One of the most outstanding programs we've ever brought to you. You'll see right here today in the next 60 minutes. You're going to see Jake the Snake Roberts and Hacksaw Butch Reed go against Nature Boy Ric Flair and Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater. You'll also see Dick Slater in action against Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting things for you here today, including Terry Taylor's return to the Mid-South and a match in the past as he goes against Gentleman Chris Adams. At this point in time, let's go to the Myriad in Oklahoma City and see Hacksaw Jim Duggan go against Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater. Duggan goes for the arm whip, but Slater reverses it. Duggan comes out of the ropes and hits him with kind of a partial clothesline. Duggan has so much weight and mass, however, he took Slater down to the mat. I don't think Slater was expecting it. He got up, you see a look of pain on his face. We've joined this match in progress. It's round number 13, the TV title tournament semifinals. Duggan firing away with rights and left. Slater is really on Green Street as Duggan hammers him with an elbow. They're on the outside of the ring. You see Dart. Whoa! Duggan went for that knee but missed it. Duggan went for the knee and missed it. And you see him looking over to the fans, kind of perplexed, it seems like. I don't think he expected to miss that, but that's why they call him Mr. Unpredictable. You never know what Dick Slater's going to do. There you see Slater using one of his pet maneuvers, the neck breaker. Now Slater's trying to maneuver Gilbert out of the way with a choke hold. I don't think it works, however, because Gilbert breaks the hold. Slater goes back and tries to get some more momentum on Duggan. There you saw a dark journey again on the outside of the ring. She's bound to be an influence in this match, as she's become in several matches. She's definitely distracting enough as it is, but then again, when she becomes involved, it's something altogether completely different. However, Duggan, I think, has somebody on his side of the fence that may be able to help him out, and that's his girlfriend, Deborah. The girl you've seen recently on Mid-South Wrestling. She's just off the camera on the right side at this point. Duggan getting up the crowd, I think helping him up. Duggan relies so much on the people. He really loves the Mid-South and all the great fans that are here. He calls it his Mid-South family. Slater with a hard forearm to the face and a lateral press. It's going to take a lot more than that to pin the big hacksaw. Slater goes to the rear chin lock. This is just the first of our main events today. Coming up next, we'll have the Masked Superstar and Mr. Saito in action. We'll see Terry Taylor go against Chris Adams. Jake the Snake Roberts and Butch Reed will team up to go against Ric Flair and Dick Slater. And we'll also see Brett Wayne Sawyer, the brother of Buzz Sawyer, go against Broadway Joe Malcolm. A great show in store for you. Stay tuned. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of exciting things a lot of exciting matches. My father will be doing some commentary. Slater looks as if he's us using the ropes there. Once again, he's maneuvered Gilbert semi out of position. Dark Journey acting there like, uh, like she's the one who was shaking the ropes. You heard the voice of Punchy in the, uh, or Deborah rather, at ringside saying that uh, Slater was using the ropes and Dark Journey again denying it. I have a feeling that Slater. There you see Deborah at ringside. Duggan gets up to his feet. Slater tries to take him into the turnbuckle, but it's too late. Duggan's up to a base. My brother, he's cooking. Duggan's pounding him in ringside. He catches him a hard uppercut. Slater, I think, might have been trying to get out of the ring altogether, but unable to do so. And once again, Slater's on Dream Street, but you can understand why. When 285-pound Hacksaw Duggan's hitting you with that 500-pound bench press strength, you're bound to feel it. 
Duggan with the lateral press. This could be it. There's a lot riding on this match. The TV title tournament, and even though titles don't always mean a lot to Hacksaw Jim Duggan, he's a competitor. And titles mean money. Slater once again turns the tables. He caught Duggan a hard elbow. Now, Slater's usually the kind of guy that once he gets a little bit of momentum like that, he'll keep on you. He'll be relentless. But I think at that point, he hesitated just a little bit too much when he went for that flying headbutt. Of course, he was a little bit staggered and dazed after Duggan was hammering him. Duggan with the spear. Oh. Duggan with the spear, but I don't know if he had it set up quite like he wanted it to. Both men are down. Duggan appears to have hit his head. You can see his eyes kind of batting there. And he's trying to regain his composure, clear those cobwebs out. And of course, Dick Slater has had to deal with the cobwebs all through this match, I think. There, Duggan falls into, Slater falls into the ropes, and Duggan's tying him up. Duggan has him tied up, and Dark Jury's up on the ring apron. It looks like Dark Jury's handing something to Dick Slater as Tommy Gilbert is trying to keep Duggan off of him. Here comes Deborah to try to even up the score, but I think it's too late. Slater already has something on his hand, but Duggan caught him, yeah. Duggan caught that thing on his hand. Whoa. He just waylaid Slater with it. Gilbert down for the count. One, two, and three. Duggan's the winner. Duggan is the winner of the TV title tournament semifinals, but Gilbert has found it. Gilbert sees the thing on Duggan's hand. And he's calling for the bell. He's calling the, for the bell and raising Dick Slater's hand. A reverse decision. Tommy Gilbert has reversed the decision due to the foreign object on Hacksaw Jim Duggan's hand. And as you can see, it wasn't Duggan's doing at all. Duggan was not the one who brought the object to the ring. However, he was the one who used the object and Tommy Gilbert, from what he saw, is definitely correct in disqualifying Duggan. Slater will move on to the finals in the TV tournament. Duggan, you can see, is sad and dejected. Let's go back to Jim Ross in the studio. A very controversial decision. A reverse decision, as a matter of fact. Hacksaw Jim Duggan eliminated from the Mid-South Television Tournament. That was a semi-final bout. Slater moves right into the finals. And ladies and gentlemen, when we return, we'll see the masked superstar in action right after this. The number one masked man in all of professional wrestling, and that he is, the masked superstar, securing a victory for his team using the neck breaker. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in just a few moments with the sensational Terry Taylor going against gentleman Chris Adams after this word from the exciting Mid-South Sports Network. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Ross. Welcome to the segment of Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen, here on WGNO Channel 26. Please join us every Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock, for Mid-South Wrestling. Every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for Power Pro Wrestling, right here on WGNO. Now, ladies and gentlemen, coming up this Monday night in Morgan City at the Miss Lauder Tournament Big Event. 7.30 in Morgan City, you'll see Dr. Death and Ted DiBiase go against Dick Murdoch and Dick Slater in Morgan City Monday night. Plus, Jake Roberts is going to be there. Pork Chops Cash, Al Perez, Brett Starry, the Superstar, Humongo, Top Chef, Eddie Gilbert, and much more. This Monday night, 7.30 in Morgan City. Now, Monday, January 13th in New Orleans, UNO Lakefront Arena, eight big matches. And highlighted by a North American title match, we have a new North American champion. I'll tell you about that later in the hour. Plus, you'll see Dr. Death against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. And listen to this, Tate Fist. They'll get it on. Dick Murdoch versus Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase is ready. Here are his comments. That we take our fists. And you've been in wrestling a long time, you know what a fist taped good and hard will do. That tape will bust the skin open, it'll bust it wide open. And if you keep pounding on a guy's head long enough, Dick Murdoch, it'll bust it open just about the way that ring post busted my head open, Murdoch. I was covered from head to toe. I lost so much blood that I got weak at the knees. I got so weak I wasn't sure where I was. And the next thing I remembered was waking up in a hospital with my neck in a brace. Dick Murdoch, the old saying is, what goes around, comes around. Ted DiBiase is back in Mid-South, and I'm back to say, and you, my friend, are going to pay some serious dues. Well, Ted DiBiase certainly has a reason for that animosity, but he's going to be going against one of the toughest men in professional wrestling. Murdoch is a brawler, and the, the rowdy Texan had this to say. 
You know, Teddy, when we met face to face, I went out and I didn't have to use any foreign objects. I didn't have to load a glove or something and knock an individual out or an opponent out. I managed to go up to meet you face to face. But let's get one thing straight, DiBiase. We're going to tape them up, Daddy. We're going to go at it like two pit bulldogs. And if you'll load your glove, go ahead. Because, Teddy, let me show you something. Get these teeth knocked out. I get scars or stitches put in his face. And they go bother me because I'm not just another pretty face from off the street, Ted DiBiase. I am the minute you fear. And when I knock you silly, I'm going to pick you up in or outside the ring on that concrete floor, DiBiase, and I'm going to drop you on the head again. And this time, you might be out for good. It will be physical on Monday, January the 13th. Plus, you're going to see Terry Taylor go against Humongous. In a handicap bout, the Bruise Brothers will go against Gustavo Mendoza. Hossef, Eddie Gilbert, and Sir Oliver Humperdinck. He will be wrestling three men against two, the Bruce Brothers against three men. Plus, you're going to see, ladies and gentlemen, Jake Roberts go for the North American Heavyweight title against the new North American Heavyweight Champion, Dick Slater. I'll have more in the hour. Pee Wee Anderson, the referee, against gentleman Chris Adams in a non-title bout. Of course, the gentleman is a self-proclaimed title. He certainly hasn't gotten that from uh, the wrestling fans here in the Mid-South area. Bell is called for. House lights are brought down. This should be a tremendous bout. Both of these men very athletic, very well conditioned, similar in size. Chuck Adams has a slight height advantage. Both of them tremendous background. Chris Adams' brother was a, an Olympic medalist in judo. Terry Taylor, a phenomenal athlete. The heartthrob of every young lady that's ever laid eyes on him. So, so confident. He, he's a tremendously confident young athlete. He's used to facing much bigger opponents. He's got tremendous explosion, speed, technique. But the big thing that you have to have that he possesses is that great heart. It's Chris Adams. He's been the nemesis of the Von Eric family in Dallas for some time. Certainly no stranger to intense competition. Swing and a miss. Two quick Japanese arm drags. Taylor went to the third one. And he's up to his feet, and Chris Adams has said, wait a minute. I gotta stop that momentum. Now he's complaining to Pee Wee Anderson. Probably some stalling tactic, complaining about pulling the tights or something like that. A lot of verbiage goes on in these matches. Collar and elbow side headlock by Chris Adams. Referee moving around for the best vantage point to be sure there's no strangle or chokehold. Well, Chris Adams held on. Terry Taylor, probably one of the finest young athletes in wrestling today. Against Chris Adams, another Newcomer from Europe, been in the States here about two or three years. As a matter of fact, my wife and I attended his wedding in Honolulu, Hawaii, quite by accident. We were staying at the same hotel, ran into him in the lobby, and he said, I'm getting married today. He said, there'll be nobody from the wrestling fraternity there. Would you please come and witness this event? And uh, we did. We enjoyed it. We had champagne, toasted him, a beautiful sunset. Let me tell you, all that nostalgia goes out the window when you face this man in the ring because you got to realize he's like a shark. He didn't get to the top by being everybody's friend. He's walked over, stepped over, and gone through anybody who got in his way. As you just saw that tactic, I don't know if you caught that, but of course Terry Taylor reacted so quick to it. That's what makes Terry such a phenomenal athlete. But Chris Adams has hung on to Terry's hair coming off the ropes, which checked Terry getting rid of him. But Terry re reacted violently and paid him back in kind, broke the hold, and then drop kicked Chris Adams right out of the ring. And, of course, Chris looking totally innocent and complaining to the referee, wanting the people to side with him. But wrestling fans are very, very knowledgeable about their sport. And it's hard for a guy like Chris Adams to fool them. Adams in for a single leg takedown. Goes into a side headlock with Taylor into reverse arm. Hammerlock and back in control. That's what makes Terry Taylor so phenomenal is his quickness and his technique. He's never a 
a still target. He's always moving. He's always planning. He's always one step ahead of his opponent. He's got that tremendous explosive change of pace that all great athletes in every sport must have in order to be great. Hammerlock by Adams with Taylor Reaver versus right into it. Arm bar, but Adams goes up for the body slam. Taylor held on to that hand, brought him in. Oh, Chris Adams with that kick, but Terry was ready. Terry was ready. Now, Chris Adams, can you imagine the audacity of this Englishman to tell the referee to get him back after Chris Adams is the one breaking all the rules? Of course, oftentimes we have people that are so upset with the referee, but the referee is part of it. One referee in the ring, I think, is, is, is sufficient. He can't win or lose the match for you. He can be a factor, but that factor, both of you have to take into consideration. Top wrist lock, both men in a power play here. He's got the leverage. I couldn't see that, but looking by the way Terry Taylor fell and the reaction to the fans here, I can guarantee you that Chris Adams didn't use a top wrist lock to pull him down. Probably went to the hair. And the hair is tremendously effective because where your head goes, the rest of your body is going to follow. And the hair gives you a leverage that's just unbelievable. We'll be back with more of Terry Taylor and Chris Adams' confrontation after this brief commercial. Time out. There again, that tremendous athletic ability of Chris Adams gets him out of the predicament Terry Taylor had him in. It's a top-notch main event. Would be a main event in any arena. And here on Power Pro Wrestling, it's brought to you in your home. So many of the cards and letters talk about our having to break away from commercial commitment. Said you don't have to do that. That's being a little bit naive, fans, because television and wrestling are fed by commercial commitment. We wouldn't be on the air without these sponsors. So at times when we bring you these main events of longer endurance, there we do have to break away from the commercial commitment. However, we have always kept the cameras rolling in order that if there was a decision during that commitment, that you would be able to view it by videotape replay. In order to bring you these high quality, this tremendous main event, oftentimes we are required to make that breakaway. The crowd solidly behind Terry Taylor, exhorting him on. You've met this young man, it's hard not to be a follower or a fan of his. Smart move. Chris thought he was coming off, Terry hung on, and Chris went for that drop kick and missed it, and Terry had him in a predicament, but Chris Adams was still able to get out. And you note that every time he gets in trouble, he leaves the scene of the action in order to get that rest, in order to slow down that momentum, in order to try to stop the onslaught. Head scissor. Terry Taylor's got him in. Now, that's not legal in amateur wrestling, but it is in pro. And that can be excruciating. I remember talking about to Leroy McGurk about amateur wrestling in his heyday and it, when he was at an All-American at... Stillwater, Oklahoma A&M then. And a head scissor was legal back in those days. A lot of the things, they wrestled in rings with ropes. They didn't have as flat a surface to wrestle on. It was a heavy picking that was stuffed. Uh, so it made a very soft, ungainly surface. But a lot of these holes that you see in pro wrestling were legal and amateur back then. Terry Taylor trying to keep Chris Adams' head forced between his legs. So he can maintain that hole. Chris Adams trying to get up to where he can torque out of it, so to speak. Both these men in the 225, 230 pound range, maybe 235, finely conditioned. They've got the size to be against the super heavyweights, and they got the endurance to be against the smaller guys. They're almost at the optimum weight range and size range to fit every category needed. You see Chris Adams, what a repertoire. That was intentional. He was trying to intentionally, at that point, with that maneuver, to totally injure Terry Taylor. And Terry to hit that ring barricade as he fell to that floor, it's bad enough for the jar that he sustained. Chris Adams showboating in the ring there with that standing flip. But he's right back to business now, trying to take Terry Taylor out, take advantage of him. This man pulls some surprising tactics on his opponents with that European style 
he has some things in his repertoire that not all the American wrestlers have seen. And oftentimes that first time can really take advantage of that situation. Pee Wee Anderson trying to get both men back in the ring. You can see the distortion of the camera as our camera people hurry around to try to bring you that close-up of this action. Chris Adams. In that position that all athletes get in some point is how do you suck it up and go? I mean, he's just had the Joker pulled out of the deck with that one move, and Chris Adams is capitalizing on that, maintaining it. He's trying to stomp that oxygen supply right out of Terry Taylor. He knows he's got him in a lot of trouble, and he's savvy enough. There he went for it, and he missed it. And Terry caught him once, caught him again. That little short jab that really rocks you. Beautiful drop kick, and Terry Taylor has recaptured the momentum, and I think right now he wants to pay Chris Adams back a little bit. Beautiful body slam. Drop the leg. He's got him. Oh! Chris Adams managed to power out. He almost had him for the three count. Backdrop Chris Adams tried to land on his feet, and oh, he caught Terry that tremendous karate kick that even obliterated Pee Wee Anderson as he couldn't get out of the way. And you wonder sometimes how these poor referees can get knocked around. You saw in the instant, a split instant, how quick Chris Adams was. And he caught Terry Taylor, and the referee was behind him, and it really splattered him. Now, Chris Adams, being the ring-wise savvy veteran he is, sees an opportunity to cheat and come off the top rope, which would be an automatic disqualification and try to finish Terry Taylor off with that tremendous cross body block. But Terry puts through. Terry's got him caught. One, two, three. Terry Taylor, what a victory. What a moral victory. What a physical victory. What an elated situation. An outstanding victory for Terry Taylor over a world-class opponent and gentleman Chris Adams. We expect great things from Terry Taylor. He's back in the Mid-South to stay. and He's got some definite goals, and we'll be speaking with him in the upcoming weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, when we return, you're going to see one of the most dynamic tag team confrontations we've ever had here on Power Pro Wrestling. Jake the Snake Roberts, the man of the DDT and the awesome Hacksaw Butch Reed will go against Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater and the world's heavyweight champion Rick Flair from Tulsa right after this. Don't forget now, ladies and gentlemen, this Monday night in Morgan City at 7.30 at the Municipal Auditorium, that big tag team explosion, Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death will go against Dick Slater and Dick Murdoch. From this all-star card Monday night, 7.30 in Morgan City. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on Monday night, January the 13th, 7.30, you know Lakefront Arena. Jake Roberts will challenge Dick Slater, the new North American champion, Dick Slater. He won the title on New Year's Day in Tulsa, Oklahoma. At this time, let's hear these comments from the man with a DDT. You see, a guy like me, a guy with my background, a guy with my lifestyle, a guy with my habits doesn't get a lot of shots at the National Heavyweight Championship. Now, Dick Slater, everybody knows how tough you are. Everybody knows what kind of man you are. And Journey, she does look fine. I'll let you know that right now. But see, she has nothing to do with this. You are the champion for a short time. You see, because when you step in that ring with a snake, oh, man, nobody's going to take me out. There's a long list of fools that thought they were going to take me out. Slater, I'm coming at you. For the gold, my man, for the gold. <laughs> yeah, and now these comments from the new North American heavyweight champion. You baby, look at this. Look at this. You know, that looks just about as good as you do. And almost better. Now, let me tell you something right now. I told the people in the Mid-South area when I got here, I was going to accomplish something. And now I have accomplished it all. This is the prime, prime title holder of all time. Now, a lot of good men have held this title, but a lot of good men have not put my back down on the mat for it for the one, two, three. And now, Jake the Snake Roberts, the DDT I have to confront to keep this title around my waist. Well, you're not going to DDT me, Jake Roberts, and you're not going to DDT Journey, and you're not going to take this from around my baby's waist because she's going to wait a long, long time. 
And the Big Creek are humongous will go against this man, sensational Terry Taylor. I'd like to say hello to all my friends in the Mid-South area. And yes, I'm back, and I'm back to stay. This is now my home, and I'll tell you, when I come back, I guess I picked about the toughest guy in the world to come back against. Humongous, a man who's carved a wake through Mid-South, leaving bodies all over the place, because the guy is awesome. Anybody that steps over the top rope and just, I tell you, he's just taking people apart. The people have seen it. Well, I know if I'm going to redeem myself in the Mid-South and come back in here to do what I want to do, that's regain my place back as a North American champion, I have to start and take care of all competitors at all levels. And humongous you are, you represent the ultimate because you are the toughest man around. Everybody's seen what you've done, and I've seen it too. Well, I feel that Terry Taylor is ready. I've never been motivated more than I am now, and I'm ready, and I'm going 110% straight ahead. I have a goal, and you just happen to be standing in the way. Let's we'll continue on the next edition of Life Bound. Of the referee Carl Fergie trying to get one man from each team in the ring. Rick Flair and Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater with Dark Journey against Hacksaw Butch Reed and Jake the Snake Roberts. And of course, Reed's still wearing that collar around his neck from the pile driver suffered at the hands of these two men. Collar and elbow into a headlock, both men fighting for position. And of course, Flair judo chopping Reed right into that neck area. The powerhouse Reed reversed Rick Flair right into those... And look at that slam, look at him. You understand now the tremendous reservoir power the North American champion has in order to get out of these situations that's why he can be so cocky, so confident. You know, when you've got that ability, that's what rate weight training has done for athletes. They've got the same athletic ability, but then they got that reserve of tremendous explosive resistance training power in order to get themselves out of trouble. And when you've got that power, you get pretty confident. Jake the Snake, the master of the DDT, Hacksaw Butch Reed's partner. Of course, Ric Flair has emph emphatically stated he's done everything to get rid of Reed. Hired bounty hunters, Dick Slater, to the tune of $50,000, but they've been unable to do it. And Ric Flair has actually emphatically refused to wrestle Butch Reed again in the Mid-South area for the world title. He is now refusing to, this, he said, this match as far as he's concerned, it's his last match in Mid-South. He will not wrestle in the Mid-South area again. You know, that really lowers my estimation of Ric Flair. I, I considered him of the three world champions, quote, unquote, to be the best athlete. But when he can start dictating where he goes and who he wrestles and the terms of the contract, to my, in my es estimation, it has then left the realm of sport and starting to be blackmail and when the national wrestling alliance lets him get away with it i'm certainly glad that i'm not a member that i'm an independent promoter that we don't have to cater to the whims and the ego of these type of people as you can see right now butch reed takes the best shot rick flair's got and then he decks it and that's why the champion doesn't want to be here there's a lot of people that don't want to be in the mid-south area they can't stand the competition. I don't care what you say. You go in any arena and you compare it head up, side by side, you look at all the stars and all the publicity from all the different areas. When they come here, they get one thing that is really qualifies you real quick. That's a gut check. That's to see just how tough you are and if you can take the competition day after day, time after time, because the Mid-South fans are the finest wrestling fans in the world today. And they're used to this top competition. And they can spot a guy. They can spot somebody who can't handle it. <laughs> right there. <laughs> you can come in and your reputation will get you right where Ric Flair landed. Right on your rump. Jake the Snake standing by out there. Jake the Snake is really an unusual individual in wrestling. Six foot five, six six, tremendous height and leverage. He doesn't have the big bulky resistance trained muscles of Reed. The smoother type, the endurance type, he has the leverage of his height, a completely different physique. Jake Snake's not going to meet you head on in every condition. He's more of a devious thinking individual, a tactician he calls himself, but he has something that he's perfected beyond what anybody else has ever perfected, the DDT. A hold that just takes him home. And if he can get you in and hit you with it, with his height and leverage, it's just over. Just like Ric Flair, he couldn't quite make it out of the ring. Butch Reed knows it. He's walking tall, and listen to these fans. They love it. Tag is made. He's going for the DDT right now. The champion knew it and sagged to his knees real quick. 
to get down close to that mat where he couldn't get dropped. Rick Flair knew he was in trouble. Jake the Snake cautious. Carl Frankie trying to break these men. It's like trying to separate a couple of porcupines. You got to both be ready and watch each other. Those short little left jabs that just punish a guy, keep him off balance. Jake the Snake's not going to knock anybody out with him, but he can sure harass the hell out of you because he's got such a, such a long arm reach, keeps you off balance, and when you're trying to think about how come that fist is always in my face, he can do other things to you. And you can see that leverage that he has, that height, when he gets that momentum and that whipping action in, it really propels you. And Ric Flair so far has been very, very unceremoniously shown that reputation doesn't mean a lot in the Mid-South area. you got to prove yourself. Reed keeping a wary eye on Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater, and rightfully so, as Jake the Snake pulls Ric Flair back in. Now Ric Flair retaliates. Even my personal opinion of his politicking doesn't take away the fact that he is the NWA world champion and he didn't get there by not being able to rise to the occasion. Snake reversed the backslide on him. He's going to, for the pin. Flair's shoulders are down, but he barely got out and he tags out. And Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater, enters the ring. While we have this pause in the action, we'll pause also for this commercial requirement. We will keep the cameras rolling because it's a stalemate right now. We'll be right back with the action after these words from our sponsor. Action right here, and it's getting hot and heavy. Butch Reed in there, and Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater is calling for Dark Journey. And this is what really insults the guy. When she gets over, she's looking at her, talking to him, slandering him, I'm sure, slapping him, roughing him up. And Butch Reed, wow! Butch Reed is not going to put up with that. And this crowd wants Dark Journey to get what's coming to her. And Reed's going after her. Slater naturally coming down trying to save his lady. And Butch, in the condition he's in, Slater was able to rake his eyes. At the same time, Rick Flair is over punishing Jake the Snake. This thing is really heated up here. Again, another main event. Main event in any arena. That's what makes Power Pro Wrestling so great is these tremendous bouts. And we want to thank you fans for joining us and giving us your comments and your loyal viewing. Forearm smashes. Reed's chest is so massive it's hard to penetrate him, but when he's oxygen poor, which he is right now, they can have a tremendous effect. Jake the Snake intently looking on. Dick Slater, that's an illegal maneuver. You cannot bring a man outside the ring inside in that maneuver. Carl Fergie should not be counting there. He should have broke because the man has to be in the ring and be on his feet and able to defend himself before the match goes on. Their tag is made. Slater raking Reed's eyes across those ring ropes. Reed's hurting. He's hurting right now. We're going to see just as this match progresses, you've got four of the top guys in the world of wrestling today. We're going to see who's got the most guts, the most determination, the most intestinal fortitude. Who can pull it out? Flair going for the figure four leg lock. He knows Reed's had those knee operations and that Reed's one Achilles tendon, maybe those knees, and he's locked it up, and you can see the agony, the excruciating pain. That's all Butch Reed is in. The crowd exhorts him. They don't want him to give up. He's telling the referee, it hurts, it hurts, and the referee's asking, you want to give it up? Dark Journey helping Flair put even more pressure on Butch Reed. Slater trying to keep Jake the Snake and the referee occupied so that they can damage Reed's knees even more. I don't think they believe that Reed, I think they feel that he'd have his legs actually twisted off before he would capitulate, but they want to hurt him as bad as they can. I don't think I've ever seen Reed submit. He can be pinned, but he, I've never seen him submit. Dark Journey is innocence personified. He needs a little good old-fashioned uh, etiquette training, or a, what you call an attitude adjustment, I think. I don't know who's going to give it to her yet, but I'm sure at some point...
He's been a lot tonight. Intense struggle with his hold. Both men locked into it. A vicious hold. This is about the only way I've ever known of a man getting out is to reverse the situation, which reverses the pain. But as he does it, Flair made a legal tag, and Reed just trapped there in the hold. Dick Slater came in and quickly drove an elbow to the back of his neck. And now he's going for that pile driver. That could finish Reed. He piled over Reed. I don't think a lot of the fans caught the fact that Flair didn't make a legal tag. Good tactical move on that team's part. But Butch Reed, somewhere within that reservoir of championship heart and power. He came out of it. He's fighting back. Fighting right up to his feet. It, he knows he has to go for broke because if he stays down, they got him in a bad way. Body check. Both men. Listen, look at this crowd. The intensity of these fans as they pull for their favorite. What makes this the sport of champions? Jake the Snake even is resorting butchery. Pull it up. Somewhere within, you've got to reach into that reservoir. Reach into that level. Reach into that pain intensity level and overcome when your body is saying give it up when you're out of oxygen when everything seems to be over you still got to pull it up and go on guts and reaction alone Dick Slater Dick Slater got level Jake the Snake begging Reed to tag. Said, get, just get to me. Get to me. I'm fresh, man. Get to me. You got to get out of there. Don't let him hold you up there any longer. And the tag is made. And Jake the Snake firing in. This is a beautiful tactical planning of tag team matches. Is that you can isolate somebody and work him over and never let him get to his partner. All four of them now. This is totally out of control. This match between these top four wrestlers in the wrestling world today. And they're going tooth and nail. The crowd was exhorting Jake to the DDT. But Slater and Ric Flair have gotten ready to read, and they're both upon Jake the Snake. Carl Fergie is at a loss to be able to maintain order in a situation like this. As they go for Jake the Snake, Reed trips Slater. Reed trips Slater. Jake the Snake, he's caught the world champion to roll it. One, two, three. Ric Flair's defeated Jake the Snake and Hacksaw Butch Reed. Look at this crowd erupt. It's pandemonium. They've won the match. We'll be back. We'll go to the desk right now. Jim Ross, your comments about this match. A tremendous victory for Jake the Snake Roberts and Hacksaw Butch Reed. As you saw Jake Roberts pin the world's heavyweight champion, Ric Flair. In a tremendous match, a great crowd in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And ladies and gentlemen, when we return, we're going to take a look at a top junior heavyweight. He's Brett Wayne Sawyer, the younger brother of Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. We'll have his match right after this timeout. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. On Monday night, January 13th, you know Lakefront Arena right here in New Orleans, a tremendous Mid-South event starting at 7.30. Ted DiBiase against Dick Murdoch, take fifth. You'll see Jake Roberts challenge Dick Slater for the North American Heavyweight Championship. Dr. Nessie Williams collides with Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. It's Terry Taylor against Humongous. Ricky Gibson against the Mass Superstar. And the Bruise Brothers will go against three men. Sir Oliver Humperdinck, Hot Step Eddie Gilbert, and the Cuban Assassin. Plus, ladies and gentlemen, you see Al Perez and Brett Sawyer in tag action and much more. At this time, let's hear some comments from the number one masked man in all the professional all over wrestling. over the world, and I come to Mid-South Wrestling, and they give me a rock and roll star to wrestle. A Gibson, famed from the Gibson family. Rock and roll, guitars, loud bands, and everything. This is professional wrestling, Mr. Gibson. When you step in the ring, you leave the cymbals, the drums, the guitars, and the saxophones outside on the floor. You better come to the arena with your mind straight. Don't have that Walkman blasting in your ear because I want you to hear the one, two, three count. I want you to know at the end of the match that you're now a professional wrestler, that you're now not a rock and roll star, and you can call your brother. Maybe he can play you a tune. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear these very interesting comments. You want a good laugh? Three against two, that's a good laugh. Yeah, Humperdinck is going to put on the wrestling tights and step into the squared circle with the Bruise Brothers, but I'm not coming unarmed, daddy -o. No, I'm going to come prepared because I'm bringing hot stuff Eddie Gilbert and my good friend Gustavo Mendoza with me. 
He is, as you know, the Cuban assassin. And we're going to kick some tail when we get a hold of those bruised brothers, Daddy. Oh, ain't that right? That's right, sir. You know, i got to hand it to you. Had you fooled everybody in this house and had you fooled the bruised brothers? Because not everybody knows, like I do, that we could very well go there by ourselves and beat the bruised brothers. Because a lot of people don't realize one thing. This man is the greatest wrestler ever to come out of the state of Minnesota. He's better than Steve Williams ever thought about being from Oklahoma. And we will beat the bruised brothers without a doubt. I know we will. And now this from the Bruise Brothers. Oh, yeah, Chop, you know, I look at that, that sheep, man, and we got three men to go get. Three men, you know that? Three. One, two, three. Well, let me tell you one thing, Harper Dick, baby. Everybody been trying to get hold of you. If I get you in that rag, baby, and fall back on them ropes and drop that 285 pounds on you, your toes gonna jump clean out of them boots you got on, baby. Cause don't nobody mess with the bruise, brother. We're live and in color, five 185 pounds of steel and second appeal. And baby, we ain't back and back now, bitch. This 1985, ain't that right, cop? Tell them, Madison, up on the mountain, shine like gold. Huh? Brother? We gon' blood as somebody know. I know that's right. I said, Ooh, I feel good. Don't mess with the two. I'm in danger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, somebody stop. Oh. I know that's right. <laughs> Craig Stansberry waiting to make the ring announcements here at the beautiful Oakland City Marriott Center. Let's listen. <laughs> in Oklahoma City. Referee Tommy Gilbert. An unusual situation with Brett Wayne. He is the brother of Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. And they've teamed before on national TV. They're very, very close. And Brett Wayne says he still doesn't believe in Buzz's tactics at times. He's my brother. I support him. I'll stay behind him. I want to come to the Mid-South for the competition. And the rumors of the World Junior Heavyweight Wrestling Tournament just don't book me against my brother. And please let the fans judge me for my ability and my tactics in the ring. I think that's about as straightforward and honest as you can be. It, you know, it's got to be difficult watching your brother when he's doing things you may believe he's against, and yet you still love him as a brother. Brett Wayne Sawyer, an explosive young junior heavyweight. Drop toe hold. Boy, how quick he is. You know, that's one of the reasons that here in Mid-South and Power Pro, we bring you all size athletes, not just the big giants, because we believe there's a place for everybody. I think people enjoy the quickness of these guys, how quick he ducks in on that single leg. Bars that ankle. Broadway Joe Malcolm, seeing this what it is, being against the young fireball. We think it's a good mix to be able to have all size athletes. Very agile youngster, this Brett Wayne. And I'll guarantee you the knee and the ankle of Broadway Joe is dictating his emotion as you hear him. Let it out. Let everybody know. Hey, it hurts. Broadway Joe goes to the ropes. Tommy Gilbert having to break. Brett Wayne Sawyer didn't even wait for the break. He knew the man was in the ropes. This is the kind of sportsmanship I really do enjoy. It can be a liability with your when you're in there against some guys, though. You got to really watch them. Test of strength here. Oh, Broadway Joe feels he's found a way to overcome Brett Sawyer by the power department. But that just goes to show you that leverage and quickness and knowledge can isolate that power and almost make it work against you if you try to go with brute strength. And of course, Broadway Joe is certainly not the guy that can overpower that many folks to start with. I'm not sure he overpowered Brett Wayne. I think 
or it was almost like a game of cat and mouse as Brett Wayne suckered him in and made that move. You notice Brett Wayne keeps coming back to his left leg that he's really had a time to work out on and, and it's just a smart tactic. If you've got some portion of the body of the guy's anatomy hurting, don't let up on it because pretty soon he's thinking more about how to protect that portion than to take the offense to you. And as he tries to protect it, it oftentimes leaves another area of his body open. Nice drop kick by Sawyer. One into a standing suit play. Vertical suit play and Broadway Joe, I think, has found out that there's more to a man than meets the eye when you get these quick little junior heavyweights, hungry weights. One, two, three, a victory for Brett Wayne. Brett Wayne Sawyer, an outstanding young man, and he's uh, certainly a, a different uh, breed than his brother. He is a, a tremendous young man, very personable, and I think you can expect great things from him in the Mid-South area. Now, ladies and gentlemen, next week here on Power Pro Wrestling, we'll have another look at the sensational Terry Taylor. We'll also see Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater in action and the return to the Mid-South of the Nature Boy, Buddy Landale, all that and so much more right here next week on Power Pro Wrestling. Thank you very much for being with us. We certainly hope you'll join us again next week, same time, for another exciting hour of Power Pro Wrestling. So until then, I'm Jim Ross saying so long, everybody.